Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, and get going. Uh, let's turn this off. Can I turn off this screen over here? Okay, I apologize here for the uh, the difficulties. Let me go ahead and uh, and uh, share the screen. And I'll go ahead and maximize here my, uh, my display. Hopefully, um, apologies here. All right, um, I will talk a little bit here. I, I'm actually having a little bit of trouble with the interface here. This is a new one for me um, in having this round table online. Um, so I'll spend a few minutes talking, then I'll maybe demaximize a little bit so I can get back and um, the screen in case anybody has any questions or is uh, trying to to join here. Um, so let me just do this here. Um, all right, there we go. I am Scott Farnsworth and I am a product manager at TIBCO. Uh, I specifically work on the AP, on our API management product called Mashery. Um, and you know, in this role and in this type of a company. We have a lot of opportunity to meet with customers on an ongoing basis, hear about their unique challenges, their stories, um, their business and IT priorities, and really get a picture of how critical APRs, APIs are these days to companies. So I would probably even uh, have to say here that I, I think we'd all probably agree that since we're attending API days, we probably do have a pretty strong uh, opinion that APIs are critical and they're playing in a very important role in everybody's day-to-day -day lives, which is only getting more important over time. So, you know, we'll talk about how a a APIs are reshaping the world, I think a little bit here. And, and really, I think the goal, at least in my mind here, is to think about how uh, the, the meaningful impact of APIs really over the last couple of months in particular um, with COVID and whatnot. So um, as I thought about this talk and about this, this, this round table, I'm also thinking about how is the world reshaping APIs uh, and integration as well. So we will get to that here. So just really quickly uh, under the heading of paying the bills, uh, who is TIBCO if you haven't heard of us? Uh, we're an enterprise software company that is focused on um, solving our customers most difficult, most challenging and hopefully most valuable problems. So we sort of look at it in three major buckets. We think about how do we seamlessly connect systems, applications, devices, et cetera, through integration, through APIs, with API management? Um, how do you unify and bring together sort of disparate information through things like data virtualization? Again, unsiloing your business and, and giving you control over it. And then how do you take that data that's been collected, apply data science and analytics to it, uh, and predict what's going to happen, hopefully in real time? Um, all this being done through a combination of SaaS, hybrid, and on-premise. All right, sorry, now that the plug is over, um, you know, you really can't go long in a customer or prospect call these days um, without having a few key buzzwords come up. Um, so digital transformation, right? Cloud native, uh, API-led, event-driven. And now one of the ones that we really uh, are hearing a lot about is, you know, the impacts of COVID-19 from a business perspective. I mean, Obviously, socially and um, and otherwise, it's it's leaving an indelible mark on on 2020 here. Um, again, not just the impact it's having to people and their livelihood and and, and their lives, honestly, but also to businesses in, in general. Um, so we're kind of looking at it from that lens here. So um, as people have you know hunkered down a bit, obviously that's going to cause some pretty big quantum shifts in the way that people are interacting. Um, you know, their patterns are changing. You know, if you are stuck in your home and not able to go out, um, how are you going to order food? Uh, how are you going to eat as one kind of small example? And so just in terms of a metric around this and actually not represented on this screen um, is, you know, according to Morgan Stanley, they had predicted sort of that um, the peak of, of online orders for restaurants would represent about 13% of, of income uh, as of 2023. So we're about three years ahead of the analysis on, on some companies as far as the growth uh, and the, um, um, you know, uh, just consumption of online ordering and, and delivery. So, you know, obviously this has been, you know, a challenge for some businesses, again, not just in this particular example, but businesses in general who have not been ready to sort of handle this load. 
Um, and you know, in other cases, there might be people who are uh, ready to handle this load from an online perspective, um, but perhaps not in the real world. And so, you know, what good is in order uh, if you can't support, um, you know, scaling out the business to to deliver it in a timely fashion? So, you know, the physical world in this case now actually sorts of sort of needs to fulfill the promise of the digital world, um, turning things on its head a little bit. So. You know, having APIs to facilitate sort of not only the online ordering aspect of things, uh, but, you know, the key relationships with partners and such that will really uh, potentially result in that critical ability to scale out and remain viable during this uh, during this time for some businesses and some industries as, as holes. And, you know, as we're seeing this, um, the shift, it's actually accelerating impact to businesses uh, and verticals out there. So. You know, traditional companies like the JC Pennies of the world that maybe weren't quite able to complete their digital transformation and were solidly brick and mortar are obviously having trouble and they're, it's accelerating their decline here in the, the lens of, of COVID-19 in the world of COVID-19. Now, there are other um, companies who are able to provide excellent customer experiences um, and are, they're thriving, right? There's plenty of examples of that around the world. I mean, uh, obviously, a huge example is is Amazon, who is seeing huge, you know, e-commerce as well as uh, compute-based demand that is just driving their value up to the roof. Um, some industries and verticals out there are, um, you know, that were previously healthy before the COVID nineteen experience are undergoing just, you know, incredible change. Um, may not ever be the same again. Um, may come out at the end of this thing in a in sort of a, a whole different view of the world with consolidation and, and just, you know, travel may not return. Um, having virtual travel maybe someday with virtual reality is a, is a whole other ball game, but, you know, it's hard to get on a plane or, or stay in a hotel um, without going out in, in the physical world these days. So, you know, uh, what are the impacts of this as we're talking to companies? Uh, and it's affecting companies very differently from an IT perspective. Um, some companies are laying off people almost wholesale, right? Starving out their innovation engine, really just to sort of keep afloat, right? As a, as a business reality. Um, others recognize that the status quo isn't gonna cut it. They know that they need efficiency, they might need cost cutting. So they're looking at things like cloud native, um, they're looking at things like serverless. Um, and then obviously through the lens of the customer experience. So being able to provide that First class customer experience, which has always been a tenet of, of, of digital transformation, is, is more important than ever. And in particular, sort of the real time aspect of it. So, uh, order fulfillment, uh, real time inventory, um, anything around that, you know, customer service type of thing is, is also very important. Um, and then, generally speaking, you know, others might just recognize that um, having APIs to unlock untouched business value, untapped business value, or partnerships that might be out there in the world um, is just a, a really important aspect of, uh, of uh, getting through this COVID business. So, um, you know, honestly here, um, wasn't sure what we were gonna see here in terms of uh, participation, uh, hoping that it would be heavy and that we could really use this time to sort of engage in a, in a conversation uh, about um, APIs and patterns. Uh, I've kind of just, prepped a, a handful of, of thought, you know, thought pieces here or, or questions to prompt the conversation. Um, unsure if we'll get people in, in certain verticals or uh, in particular roles. I see we've got about uh, 13 people in um, in this conversation. So if people are interested in joining the conversation, um, please feel free to do so. I, um, again, wasn't quite sure what to expect here in terms of participation. So uh, that's by and large, the prepared material at this time. So if anybody wants to come on um, and, and go over, introduce yourself, um, maybe talk about what role you're in or what uh, industry you're in. Uh, and we can certainly just have a quick conversation about, um, you know, what you're seeing, um, you know, what, what have you seen? How have APIs really helped you through COVID? Uh, not just you and your business, but perhaps how has it been a, a life changer or a, or a game changer for your customers? Um, you know, what challenges have you had maybe from a technology perspective during, during this COVID-19? Um, and, you know, how does that manifest in your roadmap? So are you one of those companies who are putting your projects on hold? Um, are you recognizing that you need to expand what you're doing in a certain area like, uh, 
like event driven, are you hunker down into the cost savings mode? Um, or uh, again, have, have you expanded and you're thinking about adopting new patterns, whether it's cloud native, um, GraphQL for, uh, for an experience layer to make sure that you can meet the needs of your, of your, uh, your users on your mobile devices or your tablets or whatever your TVs. Um, so with that, uh, I won't necessarily go down all these questions. If anybody wants to join, I would, uh, I would welcome it that this at this time. We've got about 10 minutes left or so to, uh, to engage in a conversation. Sure. So I, I see a question here from Rahul. Um, what are experienced APIs? So uh, the experienced API is essentially a layer that's intended to fulfill the needs of somebody who is engaging with your API. So, you know, as a basic example, if you're going to be building a mobile application, you're probably going to want to have a, a REST type API. Um, but maybe your your uh, your APIs were natively in SOAP, so you've transformed those or you want to create a, a mobile experience, so you want to make sure that your uh, output is you know, filtered down based off of the form factor and you've created maybe a responsive application, not returning too much data. Uh, perhaps it is uh, being provided uh, as a JSON as opposed to XML since it's less chatty. Um, you know, I think the, and apologies here, Rahul, thanks for joining. I know the, probably the content here is maybe slightly different than the, um, than the sort of description of the event. I think in general, you know, the experience APIs, I think as a whole is oftentimes synonymous with APIs. I mean, I know there's a whole uh, architectural uh, thinking around the, you know, experience APIs and, and process APIs and service APIs. It's, um, but, you know, but generally speaking, though, I think, uh, you know, having an API that is just not this big monolith that is expected to support every use case is important. Uh, having APIs that are baked in around particular domains is, is obviously quite important. Um, and just making sure that people can uh, use your API both in an app creation perspective uh, and as consumers of that API who may not even know that they're consuming an API, you want to make sure that those, uh, those users have a, a positive experience. Does that answer your question, Rahul? Okay, awesome. Uh, anybody else have any general questions or anybody want to throw their hat in the ring and, and hop on screen? You can, if you like, you don't have a shirt on, put your hand over your, your camera. Uh, or if you just want to, uh, to type a question into the chat, happy to talk about that as well. Um, I mean, I guess I, I can tell you in general, um, you know, uh, just maybe we look at one more pattern here the event driven APIs, obviously an, an area of focus that we're seeing out there. Um, the real time aspect of interacting with an application, um, you know, as you're ordering something online, right, making sure that your systems are not batch driven. Um, you know, if you've got 10 people trying to order one product and you're only refreshing your, your, your product inventory daily or even hourly, um, with the uh, increase in the number of people using uh, online services, that's going to that's going to result in a very uh, substandard experience, right? If ten people try to all order the same thing, um, you know, even if it never makes it past their shopping cart, just that kind of general experience might drive them to look elsewhere. Uh, and so this again is where having that experience that takes into account, um, you know, actions, business events, if you will, uh, say in the form of events which can then be you know, consumed by loosely coupled um, uh, applications within your architecture that can be uh, acting based off of that. So it could be an order that comes through and triggers a, a, an invoice, triggers, a, uh, triggers some sort of an activity within your, um, within your um, travel, um, you know, your, uh, your business expenses, et cetera. Um, and, and so we're definitely seeing a lot of interest in that. Um, you know, you might take a look at some of the stuff we put out recently on our um, our responsive application mesh um, around uh, around event driven. All right, we've got uh, got about seven or eight minutes left. Um, looks like we've picked up a, a couple of people. I, I don't have an exact uh, 
count of who's been around and watching me try to, to fill the space. Uh, but if anybody does have any questions or wants to join, we would love to have you uh, talk about experiences that you're having uh, right now uh, when it relates, as it relates to APIs. Again, for those of you that may not be, have been around the whole time, um, kind of just curious to talk about APIs in the time of COVID, uh, to borrow a little bit from uh, the book, uh, Love in the Time of Cholera there. Uh, what are you doing with APIs? Uh, where are you going with them? And, uh, and, and what are you seeing, right? What trends or patterns are you seeing? Um, what have you learned about business agility? Um, how are you partnering perhaps to, um, to fulfill the needs of your customers? All right. Uh, I feel like a DJ in a call-in show waiting for people. I know there's a lot of really interesting content out there. Um, so I appreciate uh, anybody who's taken the time to, uh, to listen, to talk about some of the, uh, the impacts of COVID, some of the patterns that we're seeing out there. Um, and again, we'll, we'll hang out here for a few minutes uh, and, and see what happens. And if there's another topic in this range, uh, perhaps you join to talk more about experienced APIs, we can certainly do that. Um, or again, if there's anybody who is, uh, you know, you don't necessarily have to be a, a business leader. You don't have to necessarily, uh, we would love to talk to a uh, to developers, to um, we, when did I become we? I don't know. Uh, we would like to talk to you about just your experience. You know, are you, uh, are you building APIs right now? Uh, have your priorities been shifted around? Um, I wish there was a way to call on people. Hey, Rakesh, um, thanks for asking me a question. Um, what are the evolving trends in API security as digital transformation is gaining momentum? Um, you know, obviously we live in a world where um, API security is is a very important pattern. I did see that there was a uh, a, um, uh, a session out there that was focused in on some of the uh, the top OWASP uh, items these days. I mean, I can tell you that um, in as much as security is is important. The, the concept of security is just shifting all the time. So um, I know that a lot of focus, at least for us these days, is around machine learning, right? So um, you have to be able to have a model for security and be able to enforce it, obviously. Um, some folks are looking at that from a machine learning, learning capability of saying, okay, well, um, let's build a model about what existing um, you know, usage looks like. And then based off of that, let's go ahead and, you know, create a model that's going to give us information about who is um, using it correctly or incorrectly. Some, sometimes we're adopting zero trust models and we're saying it's, it's not just about having the right credentials to get into uh, to an API or, or use it. It's about um, understanding whether the use of that credential is appropriate. So again, whether or not you've got the appropriate token um, is that has your pattern changed? So uh, are you making uh, different types of calls that you've seen? Are you, um, uh, are you uh, making more calls than you've seen? Uh, how can you go ahead and uh, take those patterns and learn from them and really uh, react proactively? So it's not about wanting to read about something that happened yesterday. It's, it's about um, discerning that something has happened and there's been some sort of a, a security breach or otherwise. Uh, and being able to react to it in real time. It might be uh, disabling that, that key or that token. Uh, it might be alerting security. It might be um, you know, some other action that's taken. Um, I think that's a big pattern. I think in terms of, uh, 
of security aspects when you think about like authorization level things, um, you know, distributed um, authentication or authorization through things like JWT uh, are also quite important. Um, I'd be interested to hear your feedback, Rakesh, if you want to hop on the line and uh, and 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 share with the with uh, the audience what you're looking at. No takers. Okay. I think we all knew that the uh, the online thing would be a little bit uh, interesting as we all learn this. I, I have a suspicion that we're going to be uh, in this mode for a while. Obviously, I think as everybody probably does. Uh, you know, the 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 days of looking forward to seeing people in person, I think, are a little bit farther off. But uh, we will uh, adapt and we will learn uh, about how best to utilize the tools and technology. I think this has been a great, great platform. I think we're, we're still growing in sort of what the expectations are around, um, you know, online um, events such as this. And, uh, and good stuff. I, I want to thank everybody uh, from API Days to, uh, to, for giving us a little bit of time here. Um, we do have a session later on today uh, around, I think, 2.30 uh, from TIBCO that's talking about the top 10 um, top 10 patterns uh, in integration these days. And, and uh, I think that should be a pretty interesting talk that's happening by one of my coworkers, uh, Berinder Rode. Uh, so do please tune into that. And, um, and I think there's also another one of these sessions tomorrow. Um, and so we would love to hopefully get some folks to maybe uh, come and come to that and be prepared to just maybe talk about some of these things. Perhaps, um, you know, just seeing this will give you some ideas about what's happening and, and how you might think about sharing your experience through, uh, you know, through this, um, this time with other, you know, individuals or, or companies that could benefit from your experience is that's obviously truly important. Um, so with that, I know that we've clicked over here to, uh, to um, noon and I will uh, free up the spot here and uh, just sign off and say thank you to anybody who joined. Um, if you do have any questions uh, or comments or you want to ask any uh, follow-on questions, do feel free to reach out at sfarnswell at tibco.com, and we'd be happy to, uh, to, to uh, engage outside of this forum. Thanks very much.